I first heard about the Community Impact Challenge grant through the DEI Committee for APTA North Carolina last year during its inaugural year. One of our previous alumni, Holden Cox, had applied for it and talked to several of us about different ideas he had for some of the things we could apply for. After annual conference last year, I had some discussions with different faculty members about trying to get Campbell University more involved in some of the initiatives that the ABT North Carolina had put forth for some of the university programs and colleges. I had some in-depth conversations with our pediatric professor, Dr. Goins, about a piece of equipment we had used in lab before that we learned Pilates on called Pilates Arcs. We decided that based on our heavy neuro and pediatric population that we were seeing in labs every year, starting as second years, that the Pilates arcs would be a great addition for us to be able to help community members return to their independence, as well as work on some abdominal stabilization and teaching our students different ways that they could facilitate, as well as some different intervention ideas. I invite the members of the APTA North Carolina Annual Conference to come on a journey with Dr. Goins and I as we take a look through some of our patients where we've used our Pilates arcs with and what kind of interventions we use with them. Here we're going to start first with Doug. All right, Doug, we're going to start with some abdominal. Here we have Doug progressing his abdominal C intervention by adding upper extremity involvement. By adding an overhead reach, this is challenging Doug's core more to stabilize and control the movement. We can progress from the lateral reaching into the side crunch activity that Doug is currently doing. The arc acts like a stable base for his pelvis, so he doesn't have to worry about needing a counterweight for his trunk. All right, Kylie, for the next one, you're gonna let that left arm come down towards where my foot is, and then you're gonna pull back up nice and slow. Let's try a couple of those. We can also use the arc to work on some thoracic mobility, rotation and extension. So coming here, we can get the hips in this kind of 90-90 position coming down on the elbow. You're gonna reach up towards the ceiling, twisting through your abdomen and your thorax, and then coming down, threading the arm through like a thread the needle, working on getting full range through both directions. All right, for this next one, you're gonna have this rod out in front of you. As you roll back onto the barrel, you're gonna bring your arms up overhead we're gonna hold here for a count of five, and then you're gonna come back forward. Good. Holding one, two, three, four, five, and back up. Good. All right, Kylie, from here, you're gonna work on a slow rotation over, tapping the ball down to the table, and then the same thing to the other side. For this next one, you're going to work on tossing side to side with Dr. Goins.
During Kate's boomwhacker reaching intervention, the ARC acts as a stable base to let the therapist act as targets without needing to guard her. This also lets her work on lateral and overhead reaching, trunk rotation, and trunk flexion without feeling limited by therapist hands. The ARC can also act as a tactile cue to initiate movement in the direction Kate needs to move to reach the blaze pods, as well as freeze up therapist hands for further tactile cueing and adjusting the distance of the targets based on Kate's performance. Here the ARC gives Kylie a beginning and end position for her range, increasing sensory input during the intervention for abdominal activation and coordinating it with upper extremity involvement. The ARC can also be used as a solid base for a reformer for patients to combine core and upper extremity work. Doug is an avid tennis player, and this could translate to an underhand serve, a golf swing, or could include PNF patterns while challenging core stability. We can also use the Pilates arc as a platform to do our bridges on. By elevating the feet, we can take some of the strain off of hamstrings and make it more glute dominant. You can focus on doing these either with shoes or barefoot. Barefoot will increase the amount of work that your foot intrinsics have to do to help stabilize and balance here. And then from here, some progressions you can do. You can turn it into a bridge march, focusing on keeping the hips even and flat the entire time. All right, Doug, this time we're gonna use the barrel to help us do some push-ups. You're gonna lower slowly using your elbows. You're gonna bring your nose about four inches from the ground, kind of where that yoga block is. You're gonna be slow on the way back up too. Ready. Over the last eight months that our students here have had the Pilates arcs, they have been able to brainstorm new interventions and ways to make treatment salient and beneficial to our patients that we see weekly in our community wellness programs and our pro bono clinics. Campbell University would like to give a big thank you to the APTA North Carolina and the DEI committee for investing in the future of the development of our PTs, as well as the impact they've given on our Campbell University patients.